Hi friends, today we are going to discuss the last block of MEG5 and that is Contemporary Literary Theory. Uh, in this block, we will talk about post-structuralism which includes deconstruction, psychoanalysis and Foucault's view. And then we will talk about postmodernism and post-colonial criticism. So let's begin. First of all, postmodernism. So what is modernism? Modernism and postmodernism are two literary movements that took place in the late 19th and 20th century. Well, modernism is a deliberate break from the traditional form of poetry and prose that took place in the late 19th and early century. Postmodernism was a movement against actually postmodernism was a reaction against modernism. Postmodernism was a movement that took place in the late 20th century and as I said it was a reaction against modernism. While modernism was a uh, radical break from the traditional uh, for styles and forms of prose and poetry, postmodernism was characterized by the self-conscious use of earlier styles and conventions. Postmodernism was a result of disillusionment among the writers, thinkers and philosophers of that era and this disillusionment was the result of the Second World War, the horrors of the Second World War. So postmodernism is also characterized by the mixing of different styles. Features of postmodernist text. What are the main features of the postmodernist text? The postmodernist text is basically ironical and parod and it's basically a parody. So it is often characterized by irony and satire. It demonstrates playful, mischievous kind of a text and the text or text also reflect reflects a love for of satirical humor. Then pastiche, copying ideas and styles from various authors and combining them to make a new style. Then there is metafiction. What is metafiction? Making the readers aware of the fictional nature of the text which they are reading. That is metafiction. Then there is intertextuality in the text. Acknowledging other texts and referring, them to, a, uh, referring to them in a text. Then faction. Mixing of actual events and fictional events, like uh, as we read in Salman Rushdie's uh, Midnight's Children. Paranoia, the distrust in the system and even the distrust of the self. This was a main um, disillusionment that the thinkers and philosophers of that era felt. And this disillusionment was the result of the horrors they saw during the Second World War. The plight of people the bloodshed this they witnessed during the second world war so that was postmodernism let's move on to the next slide now this question is very important often it is asked that describe midnight salman rajdi's midnight's children as a postmodernist text so here are the few points which i am going to discuss and you can elaborate it in your answer the two images that are shown is one from uh, of the book the first one and the second one is the adaptation of the novel into a movie which was directed by Deepa Mehta. You can watch the movie if you are not able to read the novel but first I would recommend that you read the novel so that you have an idea of what the author was trying to convey to the readers. But if uh, you could not read the novel because of the time constraint you can always watch a movie. It's a very interesting movie and you can easily may work out what the author was trying to convey to the reader and what he is trying to um, show to the readers. Now in this novel Rajdi experimented with the text by blurring the, blurring the boundaries between fiction and fact. Mixing of dreams with reality, mystery with magic, truth with fantasy. It is also a mock heroic novel. You will often um, read or see the heroes of the novel that is Salim Sinai uh, making big exaggerated statements about himself. So it is mock heroic kind uh, of uh, novel in its nature. 
प्लेफुल फिक्शनल ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ फैक्चुअल इवेंट्स लाइक द इमरजेंसी पीरियड एंड द बांग्लादेश फ्रीडम वार इफ यू वॉच अ मूवी यू कैन ईजली वर्क आउट दैट हाउ रजदी हैज़ मॉकड एंड प्लेफुली मिक्सड द फिक्शनल एंड फैक्चुअल इवेंट्स इट्स इट्स एन इंटरेस्टिंग मूवी सो आई वुड रिकमेंड दैट यू इफ यू कैन नॉट रीड अ नॉवल यू कैन ऑलवेज गो एंड वॉच अ मूवी and the genre which uh, rujdi used in this novel is the called the uh, magical realism so the genre is magical realism so these are the points that you can write in your answer and elaborate it further now the next movement in contemporary theory is psychoanalysis whenever we talk about psychoanalysis the only one image that comes to our mind is of sigmund freud freud was psychoanalytic and uh, we will study freud's thoughts and his points what points he has made in due, in this uh, section of contemporary literary theory we will study only those parts of freud's thoughts which have influenced literary theory Freud's thoughts were mediated by Lacan. Lacan studied Freud's theories in the light of linguistics. So, what were Freud's main ideas? Freud's main ideas were reflected in following, uh, reflected through following points. So, first of all, Freud's uh, Freud uh, put focus on the unconsciousness, then sci- child psychology, then sexuality, and then interpretation of dreams. according to freud in in our mind or in our psyche there are three psychic zones the it which is wild and untamed and it is only concerned with satisfying the pleasure centers it doesn't know what is wrong what is right it it is only concerned with satisfying the pleasure centers the other one is ego it regulates the wild drives of it and then the super ego it is a moral police it tells what is right what is wrong the work ego, what does ego do ego's work is to regulates the wild drives of it and super ego is it's it's an it's it's an uh, idealistic stage so it it is a moral police it says this is right this is wrong then lacan's main ideas lacan's what did lacan did he did the re-reading of freud's ideas in the light of linguistics and then utilized these ideas to interpret the work of literary li- literature so the un- according to lacan the unconscious is structured like a language according to structuralist uh, uh, ferdinand de saussure you must have read in your first year that is language is a structure so similarly lacan also said that unconscious is a is a structured like a language lacan used the model of psychoanalysis on the basis of structural linguistics and utilized it in criticizing a work of literature this model integrates the literary text text through the language in order to examine the unconscious of both the reader and the writer so basically what does lacan suggest he suggested that fruits main ideas are should be kept in mind while reading a work of art and the literary the language of the literary text is assessed or analyzed in order should be analyzed in such a way that you should be able to read the mind of the reader as well as the writer now the next uh, uh, topic which we are going to discuss is post colonialism this also comes under contemporary literary theory and the three main important indian uh, thinkers that um, put forward this uh, idea or put forward this term are seth edward seth gayatri spivak and homi bhaba what is post colonialism it's a critical theory which focuses on colonial experience from the colonized society's point of view in post colonial studies the writer center changes from europe to send countries like india pakistan sri lanka canada australia south africa and many islamic countries so we see that earlier 
all kind of literary criticism was done on the text which was written in europe or by european writers but in post colonial theory what we do our focus shifts from europe to countries that were earlier colonized like africa india pakistan sri lanka so all these countries were previously colonized so we will study or assess or analyze the literary work of these countries edward said he wrote a book called orientalism which was a very famous book and it put forwards the thought of post colonial theory orientalism the founder stone of post colonial studies the book depicts the imbalance between the west and the east by showing superiority of west over the east the focus of orientalism is to create awareness in continental literature so what was the main focus of orientalism orientalism the main focus of orientalism is to create awareness in continental literature written by continental writers or written by the writers of countries that were earlier colonized by european powers marginalization must be banned through the effective use of eastern literature next uh thinker we will discuss is gayatri spivak spivak's essay can the subaltern speak addressed the way the subaltern woman is constructed as absent or silent or not listened to actually subaltern is a military word and it is used for a lower rank person so gayatri spivak who was a woman himself he who was a woman herself described the plight and condition of a woman in her essay can the subaltern speak can the lower rank person speak or can a woman who is doubly marginalized who is marginalized not because he is she is just a woman but also because she belongs to a third world country or she belongs to an to a uh, she belongs to uh, she or maybe she belongs to a third world country or she uh, she is a woman she her color is black or brown so in this way gayatri spivak addressed the issue of racism and address the issue uh, the plight of women in the third world countries according to spivak women are doubly exploited in post colonial literature firstly being a woman secondly being colonized and black or brown in their complexion in complexion baba uh other the another uh, important critic uh, in post colonial studies is homi baba he has given the concept of hybridity and mimicry mimicry occurs when colonized people imitate the colonizing people and ended up with losing their own identity so this is very much clear from the statement that when you mimic someone you start behaving like them and you and you you end up losing your own identity the next thing is hybridity 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 is becoming a hybrid or a, or a mix of two distinctively different cultures so you will end up and and end up uh, uh, acquiring the culture of the west as well as the culture of the east so you will become a hybrid of two cultures then we will discuss cultural studies and new historicism Raymond William Co- Williams coined the term cultural mas- uh, materialism. Raymond Williams was a Marxist and a left winger theorist. According to Raymond Williams, there is no high culture or low culture. Culture is formed by common people. Likewise, Marx Marx also said that his, uh, in historical materialism, that everything is matter and uh, 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 the. culture of a of a particular state or a city or a country is the culture of of the living people of the is the culture of the common people not the culture of the elite but the culture of the common people and this is called popular culture or pop culture culture is a way of life the popular culture of any country is the lifestyle of its common people the way of their living their modes of entertainment what they watch where they hang out what they wear what they how do how do they spend their free time so this was uh, so the way of living of a common people is the popular culture of any country culture is democratic it is not the property of the elites culture is democratic long revolution this was a book written by raymond williams and in this book he has said that a revolution will come when the future generation will change the existing culture
एट प्रेजेंट वी आर लिविंग इन अ कैपिटलिस्ट कल्चर वी आर बॉसेज वी आर वी हैव बॉसेज एंड वर्कर्स नाउ नेक्स्ट जनरेशन वॉट विल हैपन वर्क नेक्स्ट जनरेशन और मे बी इन द कमिंग ईयर्स वॉट विल हैपन वर्कर्स बिकम द ओनर्स ऑफ द कंपनीज ऑल आर इक्वल नो बॉसेज एट ऑल now we will discuss about new historicism new historicism is a method of parallel reading of literary and non literary text of the same historical period oliver twist published in victorian period reflects social cultural and political climate of england at that time new historicist will study what will new historicist will do new historicist will study oliver twist with non literary text of that same era non literary literary text include that government the government policies that were passed during that era and a new historicist gives equal importance to both literary and non literary texts there is no privilege uh, no privilege is given to the literary text both the literary and non literary text are read with are given equal importance there are few points which i would like to mention under new historicism and these are uh, new historicism originated in 1980s it was a term coined by american critic stephen greenbart in his book renaissance self fashioning from more to shakespeare no privilege to literary text it was a, actually new historicism was a reaction to text only approach of formalist new critic in formalism we have uh, studied we studied that formal in formalism only the syntax the grammar the figures of speech the meter uh, the importance is given to these things like what kind of meter is used in the poem what kind of uh, what all uh, figures of speech are used in the po poem how the sentences are shaped and structured so in f formalists don't give any importance to the historical cultural background of the in which the text is written but new historicism is completely opposite of formalism new in new historicism we don't give any importance to the meter figures of speech and other things but our main focus was on the uh, features that reflect uh, the social economical uh, and cultural uh, background in which the text is written our main focus to figure out in which uh, Uh, conditions in which economical social and political conditions the text is written so there is no importance given to the literary and non literary text often literary text is ornamented figures of speech simile metaphors are used while in non literary text or oh, we don't use these kind of things basically it is very 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 technical so in new historicism we don't as analyze the features the ornamented the ornamental features of the text but we will we we focus on the content of the text basically in what scenario the text is written whether it is literary or non literary so in this way we completed the last block of mag5 and if you want to know more uh, about uh, uh, if you want to learn more Uh, about any of the topic or you want to discuss any other topic related to ma english ignu course you can join my telegram channel i'll be giving the link in the description box below thank you so much